Tragically, for some in Colombia who survived the war, the peace deal has proven deadly. The body of community leader Diego Fernando Rodriguez Montenegro was found on the 27th of April. The 27-year-old was murdered in his own home, allegedly with a large knife. Diego was an agricultural leader and legal representative of the local community council. He was also the latest in a long line of social leaders to be assassinated since the peace deal was signed. So far this year, 42 activists have been murdered. Last year, 117 were killed and the majority of the murderers went unpunished. The situation has been described as a slow motion massacre. Motives are not always clear. As the FARC have moved into transition zones, paramilitary groups and organised crime syndicates, known collectively as Bakrim, are looking to cover the newly vacated territory, often areas ripe for the illegal production of coca leaf, the raw ingredient in cocaine. However, Defence Minister Luis Carlos Villegas has emphatically denied that the killings are systematic and blames the deaths on drug traffickers. The areas most affected by the conflict are on Colombia's Pacific coastal region and are Chocó, Valle del Cauca, Cauca and Nariño, which have Colombia's highest Afro-Colombian population, meaning black and indigenous Colombians are being disproportionately affected by the violence. Alan Hara, the head of the Victims Unit in Colombia, argues that the work that these activists are doing is completely legal and they should be receiving state protection so they are able to continue working in pursuit of better living conditions for their communities. It was agreed in the peace deal that once the FARC had demobilised, the military would move in and regain control over the vacated territory. Time is crucial and the government must act much faster to secure these zones, or social leaders in rural areas will continue to pay the price.